In section 1.4, we're going to explain the process of measurement, identify the three basic parts of a quantity, describe the properties in units of length, mass, volume, density, temperature, and time, and then perform basic unit calculations and conversions in the metric and other unit system. So let's go over some measurement basics. Measurements provide the information that is the basis of most of the hypotheses, uh, hypotheses theories, and laws in chemistry. Every major measurement uh, provides three kinds of information. You're going to have the size or magnitude of the measurement. This is going to be a number. You're going to have a standard of comparison for the measurement. This is going to be a unit. And then we're going to have an indication of the uncertainty of the measurement. Now, it's important to realize that units are really, really crucial. Whenever you write a number, you need to have a unit with it. And this can be a little difficult for people at first when they transition from something like a pure math course, where you're dealing with pure numbers that don't have units, to uh, a science course where any number that you write is really going to be me meaningless or at best really confusing without a unit associated with it. So in this course, you're always going to have a number uh, and then a space, and then you're going to have the unit that's associated with it. Um, and it's key to understanding that using and manipulating units is key to solving chemistry problems. Um, really, it gives you a good, once you start getting used to doing some unit analysis in your problems, it really gives you a good intuition of whether or not you're getting it right or wrong. Um, in chemistry, we typically use an updated version of the metric system known as the International System of Units, or SI units. Uh, and this has been in effect since about 1964. And it's really the standard internationally uh, in general. So there, the SI system is based off of... Um, a few base units. Um, we have length, which is given in meters with a symbol of uh, lowercase m. Mass is done in kilograms. Time is done in with seconds. Temperature is Kelvin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, electrical current is the ampere or the amp, which has a capital A. Uh, the amount of substance that, of something is a mole. And the luminous intensity is the candela unit, or CD. And then when we want to talk about fractions of one of these units, it's given a prefix. And all these fractions go by the tenth. Okay, so a tenth of a meter is a decimeter. You're going to put a D in front of that little M. It's going to be one-tenth. And then one one hundredth is going to be a centimeter. And then you can have one one thousandth of a millimeter. And then you'd have a micrometer and a nanometer, a picometer, and a femtometer. These smaller ones here aren't used quite as often, but you'll see them pop up from time to time. For instance, chemical reactions actually happen at the femtosecond time scale. So they happen really, really fast. If you want to go larger, there are a set of prefixes for that. So, for instance, a uh, 1,000 meters is going to be a kilometer, and you're going to multiply by a factor of a 1,000. Uh, a million uh, meters is going to be a megameter, okay? Uh, you know, um, this would be a billion uh, units is going to be have the prefix giga, um, you see this now popping up in like computers and stuff. For instance, most RAM is in gigabytes. So billions of bytes um, is like the size of a RAM stick now. Uh, and then like sometimes you'll see Terra. For instance, like there are terabyte drives now, like hard drives and stuff that are able to store uh, a lot of information on them. And that's going to be of a factor of times 10 to the 12. So measuring length, the SI unit of length is the meter. And we're kind of always constantly refining what the definition we have for these units are, because we want something that's really rock solid, um, that isn't really 
you can't really quibble over what exactly a meter is. So it was originally intended to be one ten thousandth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. But because the Earth isn't perfectly spherical and it doesn't actually keep the exact spherical shape all the time, this is actually a moving value. This changes what the definition of a meter is at any given time. Uh, and it's now a meter is now defined as a distant light travels in a vacuum in a fr very specific se uh, fraction of a second. Uh, so now we're basing this on how fast light travels in a vacuum, which is a standard that is not going to change and is actually something we can measure now. Um, a meter is about three inches longer than a yard. If you're used to what a yard is, it's a little longer than a yard. Uh, and here we can see a graphic where we kind of compare them. You'd have like a meter. Here would be a yard. Here is a centimeter, which is usually in um, countries where they use the SI system. They typically go from meters to centimeters, just like we would go from yards to inches. Um, and you kind of get a, a sense for how large these are in scale from one another. Uh, you also can see how we would come up with the conversion factor between them, right? So if you ha knew how many inches something was, well, you'd multiply it by 2.54 to figure out how many centimeters it was because there are 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. And similarly, there's 39.36 inches for every one meter. Uh, the SI unit of mass is the kilogram. And this was originally defined as the mass of a liter of water, which actually sounds pretty good, except for we actually started to have trouble with what we really qualified as water, because it's really actually very pure to, or hard to get absolutely pure water into a container. Um, and it also tends to change the dent, because the density of water changes fairly significantly not not too bad but it does change with temperature uh, we actually started to go with something else and it is now defined by a certain cylinder of platinum iridium alloy which is kept in france so it's this thing is the kilogram like that <laughs> we base everything off of how much this thing right here weighs uh, and you can see that it's kept in this double container away from any kind of air or anything that would change its mass. And this became very important because we needed a standard for things like precious metals like gold and stuff. And, and so we decided we really need to nail this down and they made this block here. And it doesn't tend to change much or anything like that. Um, in its mass or anything like that, although it is actually losing a little bit of mass as time goes on. Uh, and just as a sort of uh, scale here, one kilogram is about 2.2 .2 pounds. Uh, so for temperature, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Um, there's no degree word or symbol associated with Kelvin. You just say like it's 200 Kelvin, you know, say 200 degrees Kelvin, for instance. Uh, the degrees Celsius is also used in the SI system. Uh, Celsius degrees are the same magnitude as those of Kelvin, but the two scales place their zeros in different places. So zero degrees Celsius is the point at which water freezes. But that's actually 273.15 Kelvin. Uh, and water boils at 373.15 Kelvin, but that's actually 100 degrees Celsius. So for this reason, Celsius is a little bit more practical to use most of the time. You know, uh, you know, freezing is zero, boiling is 100. So let's say the temperature outside is going to be, you know, a little negative of degrees Celsius. It could get that cold, but it's not really going to go above 100 degrees Celsius. We don't really see it where all the water starts boiling. Um, so it gives you kind of a good sense of scale. Uh, but it, it would, the reason why Kelvin was set up is because Kelvin is actually an absolute standard. So zero degrees Kelvin is the coldest that anything could ever be. Uh, and when it says that they're the same magnitude, what that means is that 
if something goes up by one degree Kelvin, it's also going to go up by one degree Celsius. Those two units are the same size, which isn't necessarily true for Fahrenheit. One unit of Fahrenheit is actually, uh, let me think here, it's five ninths of a degree Celsius or a degree Kelvin. Uh, the SI unit of time is the second. Uh, smaller and larger time intervals can be expressed with the appropriate prefixes. Um, but typically you're going to see the things that you're really used to of hours, days, and years, where these are all based on 60, right? 60 seconds to the minute, 60 minutes to the hour, 60 or 24 hours to the day, uh, 365 days to the year. Um, it's kind of interesting where the 60 comes from. That actually is from like ancient Babylonia. And it's because 60 it can be conveniently divided by a lot of numbers evenly, right? You can divide it by one, you can divide it by two, you can divide it by three, you can divide it by four, five, or six. So it kind of made the math easy to use 60 as the base. Now, there are a lot of things that we might want to measure, and we need a unit for all of them. And obviously, I only gave you seven so far. Uh, but actually, all the other units that you're going to see can be carefully or cleverly derived from those units. So here, an example of that would be volume, the measure of the amount of space occupied by an object. Um, this could be derived from the meter, where the standard unit would be the cubic meter. Um, and then we can derive other units from that. So let's kind of picture that for a second. So if I have just one meter, and I want to talk about the volume, well then I start picturing a cube that's a meter on each side. And this is now a square meter, and that can be my basis for volume. Then I could picture that that m square meter is actually made out of a bunch of uh, cubes. Each one is a centimeter on each side. And I would wind up with, uh, oh, what would that be? Uh, 100,000 of these cubes inside of a square meter, right? And then I could picture taking out that square meter and it's going to be equal to one milliliter. So one cubic centimeter is the same as one milliliter. And if I had just a tenth of it, right, which is I guess what this picture is actually showing us here, this is one deciliter here, that's going to be one liter. So just based off of the meter, I now have derived the square meter. I can picture taking off uh, one one thousandth of that and having a square decimeter, I call that a liter. And then I picture taking off one one thousandth of that, I have a squared centimeter, and I can call that a milliliter. Uh, the density of a substance is the ratio of the mass of a sample of the substance to its volume. So we have density is equal to mass divided by volume. The standard SI unit for density is kilograms per cubic meter. Um, commonly used density units based on the states of matter. So we can take this unit here as our base unit, and we can have other ones that are more convenient for us. Like for instance, we can talk about grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, we know that a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter, so you can talk about grams per milliliter. Uh, we're gonna see that later on in our labs. Um, and then when the numbers start to get really kind of small for gases because they're not very dense. We can start talking about grams per liter, uh, have a little bit larger volume so that this gram number isn't quite so small. We're not going to have to deal with such small values.